Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one whiskey. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Talk about swell tasting. Say, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are super delicious. These ready-to-serve cereals really hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. And it's full of bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit, like, say, sliced bananas. Add milk or cream. And, oh, boy, what a treat. You can't beat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Before the great strike was made on the Bonanza, there were only a few hundred miners in the whole of the Yukon Territory, and the Northwest Mounted Police made their patrols once or twice a year. Just as in the early days in California, the miners meted out their own justice, and the miners' meeting took the place of a court of law. This was the custom on Gonaway Creek, where nearly 40 claims had been staked. Johnny Johnson owned one of them, and he built a small cabin on his property for himself and his wife. One night in January, as they were finishing their supper... More coffee, Johnny? No, no thanks, honey. I better get the dogs harnessed. I gotta drive down to the post. Mm. Tonight? Mm-hmm. But there's no moon. It's so dark. Can't you wait until tomorrow? No, Ellen, my note's due today. Mr. Merrill won't mind if you pay him tomorrow. But I can't pay him. Throwing out the ground so I can dig gravel, melting snow to wash it out... I've only got about $100 worth of dust. And the note's for 200 That's right. Not only that, but we need more supplies. And I'll have to ask him to renew the note, so I'd better get there tonight. Mr. Merrill will renew it, won't he? I think so. What if he doesn't? Well, he claims up a security. He can take it. Oh, no, Johnny. For $200? There's no telling how much this claim is worth. When the frost is out of the ground and the creek is running, why... Why, I'll bet you wash out $200 a day. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Ellen. I think Mr. Merrill will renew. Give me a kiss. Be careful. I'll be back in two hours. Three at the most. Johnny made good time. There had been no fresh snow for nearly two weeks, and the crust was so thick that it held up team and sled easily. It was like traveling on glare ice. Johnny reached the post, the mouth of the creek, in less than an hour. Oh, hold oh, oh, there. Go oh, there. He stopped his team and ran up the steps of the store. Hello. The lamp on the counter cast a dim light. There was no one in the store. There was more light coming through the half-open door at the rear of the store, however. The door that led to Merrill's living quarters. Johnny stopped on the threshold. Mr. Merrill. There was no answer. Johnny pushed the door back. Now he could see Merrill. He was sitting in a chair, his head lying on the desk in front of him. Sleep. Mr. Merrill! What the... There was a red stain on the back of Merrill's shirt. Blood. He's been shot in the back. Johnny lifted the small body and listened for a heartbeat. There was none. Dead. There was an old sourdough called Mike Rafferty who worked for Merrill and lived in a small cabin in back of the post. Johnny went to the back door, opened it, 
and was about to call when he saw a gun lying just beyond the doorstep. He picked it up. A few feet beyond, dark against the snow, was the body of another man. Johnny put the revolver in his pocket and ran to him. Mike. Holy smoke, he's been shot too. Mike. Mike, can you hear me? It's Johnny. Johnny. Get Doc. The doctor? A fine chance of that around here. Who did this? Who shot you and Merrill? Get Doc. I'll do the best I can for you, Mike. I'll carry you inside and bind that wound, but... Golly, I'm afraid. Mike was heavy and Johnny was slight. He had a hard time carrying the old sourdough into the post, but he finally made it and placed him on Merrill's cot. Somebody kill me. Thank goodness I don't know much about bandages. Who's there? Come here, quick. Oh, hello, Johnny. I didn't think it was Merrill. Hey, what's happened here? Merrill and Mike have been shot. Uh, Merrill's dead. What? I can see that. And shot in the back. Mike's still alive, though. Uh, look in that cabinet, Flint. See uh, what there is in the way of bandages and antiseptics. Yeah, sure thing. Well, who could have done it? I don't know. Is this where you found Mike? Oh, no, no. Out in back. Um, unconscious? Practically. He said something about getting a doctor, that's all. Uh, here's a bottle of antiseptic. Oh. Have either of you had any experience taking care of a wound like this? Uh, I haven't, and my hands are shaking. It was an awful shock. Well, I'll do my best. Yeah, there's some water in this pan here. Yeah. I'll wash it first. Poor Mike. Looks about done for. Huh? Who could have done it? Where are you going? Just to take a look outside. Yeah. Only one set of tracks out here. Well, yeah, they're mine. You're wearing hobnails, hmm? Well, yeah. But if a man was wearing mucklucks, he could walk on that crust without leaving any tracks. Uh -huh. I figured that somebody came to the back door, opened it, and shot Merrill in the back. Then when he realized Mike had seen him, he shot him, too. Oh, oh by the, the way, here's a... The stings a bit, Mike's opening his eyes. Mike, who was it? Who killed Merrill and shot you? Johnny. Get dark gone again. You hear what he said? Yeah, just what he said before to get a doctor. He said you shot him. No, he didn't. He was talking to me. He was talking to me. That's right. He said you shot him, Johnny. You're crazy. My... Take your hands off him. What's that bulge in your parka? Oh, that. I was going to show Here, you. Here, let me see it. Hey, look, Flint, a gun. And it's been fired recently. Well, uh, yeah, I picked it up just outside the door. Two shots fired. One for Merrill and one for Mike. Sure, but I didn't fire them. I walked in here and found Merrill dead. That's your story. It's true, I swear Why, it. Why, Johnny? An old man like Merrill. And in the back, too. But I didn't, I tell you. Why'd you come here tonight? I, I, I owed Merrill $200. He had my note. I was going to ask him to extend it. And he refused. No such thing. He was dead. What'll we do with him, Flint? Well, hold him here, I guess. The store's as good a place as any for a miners meeting. I'll drive back up the creek and tell everybody to be here tomorrow morning. A miners' meeting? What's the idea of that? What do you suppose? We're going to try you for murder. Uh, oh, no. No, Garrett, I didn't. I swear I didn't. The following morning, Sergeant Preston was driving south on the Yukon Trail. Unting! A man had pulled up at the side of the trail and was whipping his lead dog. The sergeant was wearing a parka over his uniform, and it was not as a member of the force that he shouted out a command. Stop that! Stop beating that dog! Oh, hooking! Do you hear what I said? Why don't you mind your own business? Give me that whip! Sure, I'll give it to you! The man lashed out with the whip and cut the sergeant across the cheek. In the next instant, the whip had been jerked from his grasp. The traveler landed a vicious right on the sergeant's jaw. Sergeant dropped the whip and countered with a left to the solar plexus and a right to the jaw that sent the travelers sprawling on the ground. You had enough? Yes, yes. Why were you whipping your lead? Because he belongs to me. I got a right to teach him a lesson. What had he done? He wasn't pulling his weight. Looks like a good dog to me. There must have been a reason for it. Easy, boy. I'm not going to hurt you. Let me see your paws. Huh? Look. What? They're cut. How'd he do that? On the snow. When it's crusted this way, it can cut like a knife. You shouldn't be allowed to drive a team. How do you figure it's my fault? Look at my dogs. Look at the way I protected their feet. With leather. Yes, it's easy to do. 
Use caribou skin. First time I ever heard of dogs wearing mucklucks. That doesn't stop it from being a good idea. Well, I haven't got any leather. You can get some from Father LeClaire, whose mission's just around the next bend. But you'd better stay there and let the father doctor those paws. A few more miles and this team won't be able to walk, let alone pull a sled. I've got to get to Circle City. You won't ride if you don't wait until tomorrow. Well, okay. I guess I'd better take your advice. And thanks. That's all right. Sorry I lost my temper, but I don't like to see a dog mistreated. Well, I won't anymore. You can depend on it. Good. Let's go, King. One King! One Husky! The light was fading when the sergeant reached Gornaway Creek, but he could see a crowd out in front of the trading post. A rope was being thrown over the branch of a tree. A young man was standing near the tree, his hands tied behind him. A woman hysterical was being held back by two men. It's a hanging. Hun King! Hun, you huskies! We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Q-U-A-K-E-R-P-U-F-F-E-D W-H-E-A-T. Yes, we can tell what you're spelling. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals the whole family goes for. They're shot from gum. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from gum. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. And then... These king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're nourishing. Good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So try delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So tasty, so easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Enjoy this thrifty, deluxe family breakfast tomorrow. And remember, for variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one day, Quaker puffed rice the next. Remember, too, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue Quaker package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston drove straight up to the crowd of miners who were preparing to hang Johnny Johnson in front of the Gonaway Creek trading post. Looking through you, Husky. What's going on here? We're hanging this man for murder. Are you in charge? Not exactly. Norm White was chairman of our miners' meeting. That's me. White? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, Well, Sergeant, I'm happy to turn this job over to you. You've held a meeting and the man's been found guilty. That's right. I didn't do it, Sergeant. He's innocent. They're the murderers. We found him guilty. The boat was unanimous. Glad I arrived in time. Time for what? What's your name? Garrett. Well, Garrett, you very nearly made a big mistake. Mistake? Look, I know the laws of the Northwest Territory. A miner's meeting is qualified to try him. True enough. But before your sentence can be carried out, the force must examine the evidence. Prepare to do that right now. Untie that man's hands and take him inside. During the next hour, the sergeant listened to the conflicting stories of the crime. He went through Merrill's desk and then examined Mike's wound. Mike was still unconscious and his breathing was labored. Yeah, looks like he's done for. The bullet should be removed. Nobody around here to tackle a job like that. There is someone not too far away who could do it. Who's that? Father LeClaire. He's had medical training. Let's get back to the store. Sergeant, satisfied? Not entirely. Found Johnny's note in Merrill's strong box, didn't you? Yes, but I didn't find any gold. Well, he's probably got it hid someplace. And I wish I could have seen Merrill's exact position when he was found. We didn't know you were coming, Sergeant. 
can't blame us for burying him. Oh, I'm not blaming you, but you all testify he was shot in the back. That's right. If Merrill were having an argument with Johnny, I can't understand why he'd let him get behind him. I didn't. It's like I told you, Sergeant. Somebody opened that back door and shot him while he was sitting at his desk. Sure, somebody. You! No! You didn't have nerve enough to shoot him face to face. You pretended to leave by the front way, but you didn't. You walked around in back. No, Sergeant, it's not true. Sergeant, you've made your investigation. We haven't changed our mind any. Johnny's guilty. It's envy. It's greed that makes you say that. Your claim's no good and you want ours. Your claim belongs to Marrow, or whoever his heirs are. It does not. Quiet, quiet, all of you. Sergeant, the main thing is Mike's testimony. Flint heard him, so did I. He said Johnny was guilty. It's the way I told you, Sergeant. He thought he was talking to me. He was asking me to get a doctor. I asked him who killed Merrill and shot him, and he said Johnny. Right, Flint? That's right. The dying man's testimony is good in any court of law. And you can't deny that, Sergeant. I'm not, but it doesn't cover the present case. Why not? For the simple reason that Mike isn't dead. You're going to do what you should have done long ago. What's that? Get a doctor for him. A doctor? Where? He's talking about the missioner, Leclerc. Oh, yes, Sergeant, please. Save Mike's life and he'll clear Johnny. I know he will. White. Yes, sir? I'm leaving the prisoner and Mike in your charge. You'll have to stay here tonight. Okay, Sergeant. Please. I can stay too, can't I? No reason why you shouldn't, Mrs. Johnson. A long way to the mission. I'll be back with Father Leclerc before morning. All of you better go on home now. You can hold another meeting when Mike's able to testify. If he dies, then our verdict still stands. Well, we'll try to save him. Come on, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston swung onto the Yukon Trail and headed north. He made one stop less than half a mile from the post, where he examined the remains of a campfire. And then he drove on into the night. Inside the post, Ellen prepared supper for her husband and Norman White. And then the three of them took up a vigil beside Mike's cot. Toward midnight, White dozed off in his chair. Johnny. What? He's asleep. Yeah. Your team's outside. If you want to. Do you to, want me to? I don't know. It's all so unfair. If he dies, then nothing's changed. I'll say you're guilty. Maybe it'd be better to run away. Uh, the sergeant would catch me sooner or later. And that'd be the same as an admission. Uh, all we can do is hope that the sergeant brings Father Leclerc in time. Yes. Hope. Pray. At that same moment, Sergeant Preston was stepping on the brake of his sled in front of the mission. Looking! As he walked up the steps to the door, he noticed that there were only the father's dogs in the run beside the house. As soon as he had knocked, he heard the missionary's voice. And a moment later, the door was opened. Huh? Oh, Sergeant Preston, come in, come in. Thank you, Father. Father, I have bad news. Sergeant, I'm sorry to hear it. There was a murder last night at Gonaway Creek. No, did you? John Merrill, shot in the back. Who could have done such a thing? That's what they're trying to find out. They've already held a miners' meeting, and they think they have the guilty man. Who could it be? Young Johnny Johnson. No, sir. I don't think he's guilty either, but all the evidence there is points to him. It's hard to believe. It's impossible for me. I've met too many killers in my time. There's something in their eyes that can't be mistaken. Someone like Johnny couldn't kill unless it were under extreme provocation. Monsieur Merrill would not have given him that. But it seems there's only one way to save him, Father. If there is anything I can there do... There is, Father. Mike Rafferty was shot at the same time Merrill was killed. He was the only witness to the murder. If you can save his life, we'll be able to learn the whole truth. He is badly hurt. Bullets near his heart should be taken out. I will go to him at once. I knew you would, and I was going to take you back myself. But, Father... I suggested that a man stop here and ask you to bandage his dog's paw. We did, Sergeant. I also suggested that he give his team a full day's rest. He was very impatient. Some important business in Circle City. Huh? You say what it was? No. He went to bed as I did at 9 o'clock. But just an hour ago, I heard him up. He said he could not sleep, and, well, he said goodbye and left. Only an hour ago. Father, I'm going after him. You do not think he has anything to do with it? I don't know, and I'd rather you wouldn't say anything about it at Gonaway Creek until I make sure. You can depend on me, Sergeant. At four o'clock that morning, Johnny and Ellen heard a dog team stopping outside the post at Gonaway Creek. White. What is it? Dog team stopping outside. Maybe it's the sergeant. 
Uh, sleep, huh? Well, I guess I can trust you two. I'll go see. Bonjour. Hello, Father. Where's the sergeant? You are Monsieur White? Yeah. He will be here in a few hours. That's all I can tell you. Where is the wounded man? Uh, this way. Father Leclerc went to work and extracted the bullet from Mike's chest. His breathing became easier, but for a long time there was nothing but a faint whistling sound in the room. Then, toward morning... Father, uh, yeah. are you praying? Yes, my child. The prayers for the dying? I have done my best. <gasps> it is God's will now. <laughs> Another hour passed. The missioner, who had been feeling for Mike's pulse, leaned forward and listened for a heartbeat. It was a long moment. Then Father Leclerc sighed. Without a word, he crossed Mike's arms on his chest. Father, he's dead. Yes, my child. Oh, Johnny, my last hope. Don't, don't, Evan. There is always hope. They'll be coming back soon, Garrett and Flint and the others. The sergeant will be coming, too. But what can he do? They'll say Johnny's guilty. They'll hang him. I've promised to say nothing of what the sergeant tries to do. It may be that nothing will come of it. But put your trust in him, my child. I will pray for you and your husband. Oh, come on. Oh, do not Johnny. despair. Oh, it's not as soon as it was light, the miners began to return to the post. When he learned that Mike was dead and the sergeant hadn't returned, Garrett called for action. Well, what are we waiting for? We've already held our meeting. Mike's dead. Nothing can change what he told us. Johnny killed him and Merrill. I say, let's get the hanging over with. We ought to wait for the sergeant. What for? We got work to do. Why should we waste any more time? Merrill was our friend. So was old Mike. The man who murdered him is in that room. I say, let's drag him out and string him That's up. right. Let's have some justice around here. Now, now, wait. There's wait. no sense to waiting. How about it, men? We want justice. Who's with me? I am. Hey, come on. Let's go get the He's kill. right. Let's go get him. Stop. You do not know what you're doing. The sergeant believes this man to be innocent. Out of the way. We say he's guilty. That's right. In the gray light of morning, the sergeant was racing along the Yukon Trail. There was a passenger on his sled. The man he had stopped from beating his lead dog the day before. The man wore handcuffs. The team swung to the right, leaving the Yukon and heading up Gonaway Creek. The scene was an almost exact duplicate of the one the sergeant had witnessed the previous afternoon. Once more, Johnny stood with hands tied. But now the rope had already been slung over the branch, and the noose was around Johnny's neck. Up! Up in the name of the Queen! Hulking! Hell, you have to be! Hold on! Sergeant, stop them! Take that noose off Johnny's neck. Not this time, Sergeant. We're going through. Now, we are. now listen to me, all of you. You recognize this man on the sled? Hold up your head so they can see. Uh, hey, hey, why, it's Brainer. Sure. A lot of you seem to know him. Well, he used to work for Merrill over a year ago. Merrill fired him for stealing. What's his first name, Garrett? Why, why it's Ed. Ed? Yeah. We always used to call him Doc. Right? I thought so. Well, you got him handcuffed. What's he done now? He's under arrest for the murder of John Merrill. Uh, right? murder. You're the chairman of this miners' meeting, White. Shall I present my evidence? Go right ahead. First, this man was camped half a mile from here night before last, the night that Merrill was killed. You can't prove that. Oh, yes, I can. The remains of the campfire are still there, and around it there are paw prints. Any dog could Paw prints more. stained red. Your lead dog's forepaw was cut, Doc. I can testify to that, and so can Father Leclerc. My way, I bandaged the paw. Is that all? You're accusing him just because he was camped near here? That was what made me suspect him. When I caught up with him, look what I found on his sled. What? The motive for the murder. A leather bag. A bag of gold dust with the initials J.M. stamped on the leather. That should be enough to convince even you, Garrett. But there's something more. Something that ties up the robbery with the murder. Mike's words. Sergeant, I did my best, but it was too late. Mike is dead. Oh? I'm sorry. Still... If he's gone, then what Garrett pointed out before is true. Mike's last words are admissible as testimony. He wasn't concerned about his wound when he said them. He knew just as well as the rest of you. There's no real doctor within 500 miles. 
He was accusing the killer. What did he say, Garrett? He said, get Doc. Right, Flint? Yeah. Why, you dirty double Shut up, you fool. We've already sworn to that. Put my neck in the noose, will you? Well, you'll hang with me. Garrett and Flint were both in on it. That's a lie. They were going to meet me outside and split the gold. They kept watching the post and tipped me off when the old man was alone. Shut up! Bungled the job, too. Told me Mike had gone up the creek when he was in his cabin. Well, he came back. That's enough, Flint. I'm charging you and Garrett as accessories before the fact. You're under arrest. Yeah, well, this gun says we're not. Stand aside from your sled. All the rest of you, get back. Flint grabbed the lead dog, turned him around. Yeah, come on, get around. That's... But King had no intention of obeying any command that didn't come from his master. Flint tugged at his harness. King dug into the snow and growled his defiance. Dog's dangerous. Cut him out of harness. He can manage the rest of the team. Okay. Freedom from the traces was all that King needed. He had recognized the menace in Garrett's gun, and as soon as the leather was cut, he dove for Garrett's leg. Garrett was knocked to the ground. All right, King. The sergeant jumped on top of Garrett, grappling for his gun. Flint turned to use his knife on the sergeant, but King barred his path. All right, Flint. And in Flint's moment of hesitation, Johnny closed in from behind and pinned his arms to his side. The sergeant wrenched Garrett's gun from his grasp. Oh, get up, Garrett. It's you who's covered now. You're going to jail with Flint and Doc. That means you're free, Johnny. We have the real criminals, and this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Here's the breakfast that brings cheers from coast to coast. The breakfast that wins praise from so many top action Hollywood movie stars, too. It's swell tasting Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Enjoy this economical deluxe breakfast treat every morning. That's the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to get the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Diamond Collar. When King and I stopped at a cabin near the top of Windward Pass, we heard a girl inside calling for help. Just as we entered the cabin, an explosion rocked the earth and an avalanche roared down the slope behind the cabin. It was either move fast or be buried alive. And from then on, there was the threat of death in every second. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow, because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.